Hello, vital sign. Today we'll be covering one of my all-time favorite geometry problems. Look at triangle ABC. We are told the line segment AD is an angle bisector of CAB. That's this angle right here. Let's call this angle angle A. We are also told that line segment BE is an angle bisector of angle CBA. Let's call this angle B. We are also given that angle EDF, or angle D, measures 24 degrees, and angle DEF, or angle E, measures 18 degrees. The question is, what are angles A, B, and C? To get a feel for the problem, let's just fill in as many angles as we can with what we've been given. Let's apply the fact that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees to triangle D, E, F. Since angles D, E, and F must sum to 180 degrees, and we are already given that angles D and E sum to 42 degrees, and angle F must measure 180 minus 42 degrees, or 138 degrees. Note that angle F is a vertical angle to angle BFA. This means that they are congruent, so angle BFA must also measure 138 degrees. And now we discover a really important fact, one that will ultimately let us find the measure of angle C. What are these angles here? Angles FBA and FAB. Well, since they were formed by bisecting angles B and angles A, respectively, angle FBA must equal half of angle B, and angle FAB must equal half of angle A. And since the sum of the interior angles of triangle ABF must equal 180 degrees, and since we know that this angle here is 138 degrees, then half of angle A plus half of angle B must equal 42 degrees, or 180 minus 138 degrees. Multiply both sides by 2, and you'll see that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equal 84 degrees. So how does this give us the measure of angle C? Well, remember that the sum of angles A, B, and C must be 180 degrees. And since we now know that the sum of angles A and B is 84 degrees, then angle C must measure 96 degrees, or 180 minus 84 degrees. That wasn't too bad. All we did to find angle C was fill in some vertical angles. However, to find angles A and B, we'll need better tools, such as the angle bisector theorem and the law of sines. The angle bisector theorem says that the ratio between the two segments formed by an angle bisector, in this case we could look at that as segments CE and segments AE, is equal to the ratio between the other two sides of the triangle. For example, in our problem that would mean that the ratio of length of segment CE to the length of segment EA equals the ratio of the length of BC to BA. Similarly, the ratio of segment DC to BD is equal to the ratio of the side CA to BA. In other words, the ratio of the segments equals the ratio of the sides. Feel free to pause and think about why the angle bisector theorem is true. I'll show the proof at the end of the video. This is going to be really useful for our problem. Next, let's introduce the law of sines. In a triangle, the ratio of the sine of an angle to the length of its opposite side is equal for all angles in the triangle. So what does this mean in the context of our problem? Well, according to the law of sines, the sine of angle A divided by the side length of BC, or the side opposite this angle, equals the sine of angle C divided by the side length of BA, or the side opposite angle C. And those two ratios are equal to the ratio of the sine of angle B to the side length of CA, which is the side opposite angle B. We can write this out as sine of angle A 
divided by side length of BC equals the sine of angle B divided by the side length of CA equals the sine of angle C divided by the side length of BA. Now, to show you an important equivalent statement, let's just look at these two left parts of our equality. I'd like us to multiply both sides by a side length BC and by side length CA. This is called cross multiplication. This is the result. Now, let's divide both sides by the sine of B and then divide both sides by side length CA. This is our result. So what this is showing us is that, and let's zoom out here a little bit, the ratio of the sine of angle A to the sine of angle B equals the ratio of side BC to side CA. So look at that. The ratio of two sides in a triangle equals the ratio of the sines of the angles opposite those sides. So the ratio of the sides equals the ratio of the sines. Feel free to pause and think about how we can connect the segments to the sides to the sines with these two laws in a way that lets us solve our problem. So here's how we'll go at our problem with these two theorems. If we can find the ratio of segment AF to segment BF, we will know the ratio of the sine of half of angle B to the sine of half of angle A. And since we also know that half of angle B plus half of angle A equals 42 degrees, we can then set up a system of equations. One equation will be the ratio of the sine of half of angle B to the sine of half of angle A, and the other equation will be that A plus B equals 84. We can graph this system with angle A on the x-axis and angle B on the y-axis, and the point where both equations intersect on the graph will be a point where the x and y coordinates add up to 84, and the sine of the x-coordinate divided by the sine of the y-coordinate is the same as the ratio of the sine of half of angle A to half of angle B. So how can we first find the ratio of segment AF to segment BF? Well, first, let's consider triangle DBA. If you notice, its angles are angle B, half of angle A, and some mystery angle, ADB. Well, if you look at it this way, triangle DBA is basically the same as our original bigger triangle, ABC, in that we kept angle B the same, halved angle A, and then added half of angle A to angle C. That's really all we did to get triangle DBA. So the measure of angle ADB, that's this one right here, must be 96 for angle C plus half of angle A. Next, consider segment BE. It's still a bisector of angle B, but in this case, let's view it as a bisector within triangle DBA. It splits segment DA into two segments. DF and AF. By the angle bisector theorem, the ratio of the length of AF to the length of DF must equal the ratio of side BA to side BD. And by the law of sines, the ratio of side BA to side BD equals the ratio of the sines of angle ADB to angle half of A. So let's just take that in and think about what that means. That means that we now have the following chain of ratios. Segment length AF to segment length DF equals side length BA to side length BD equals the sine of 96 plus half of angle A to the sine of half of angle A. And with this last ratio, we can now write the length of AF in terms of DF. And this is going to be a big breakthrough for our problem. Let's just take out the middleman here and equate these two ratios. And now if you multiply both sides by segment DF, we get segment length AF equals this ratio here times segment length DF. Now that we have an abstract form describing the length of AF, let's find an abstract form of describing the length of segment BF. Then we can compare these two and we'll have our ratio. So consider triangle E, A, B. Let's look through its angles. It has angle A, 
half of angle B, and a mystery angle, AEB. So what is the mystery angle? Well, the same way that we found mystery angle ADB from our last triangle, we can find AEB. Because remember that triangle EAB, the one that we have highlighted here, is the same thing as our original triangle, except that we kept angle A the same, halved angle B, and then added half of angle B to the measure of angle C. So really, this angle here is just angle C plus what we took away from angle B, which will be this right here, half of angle B. And that would be 96 plus B over 2. And keep in mind that line segment AD is still an angle bisector of angle A, and that it splits side BE into two segments, BF and FE. By the angle bisector theorem, the ratio of BF to FE equals the ratio of side BA to side AE. And by the law of sines, this equals the ratio of the sine of angle AEB to the sine of half of angle B. This gives us the following chain of ratios. Segment length BF to segment length FE equals the length of segment BA to the length of segment AE equals the sine of 96 plus B over 2 to the sine of B over 2. This now lets us write segment BF in terms of segment FE. Again, let's take out the middleman here. Equate these two fractions and multiply both sides by segment length FE. And now comes the cool part. See, the key to this problem is that FE can be rewritten in terms of DF by applying the law of sines to our little triangle here, DEF. Side FE to side DF must be equal to the sine of 24 degrees over the sine of 18 degrees. Therefore, segment FE equals segment DF times this ratio here. Now let's revisit our equation for segment BF. Let's substitute our previous result for FE. This is our new equation. And remember our goal. If we can find the ratio of segment AF to segment BF, we will know the ratio of sine of half of angle B to the sine of half of angle A. And we can use that fact and the fact that angle A plus angle B equals 84 degrees to set up a system of equations. We're almost there now. Since we have both length AF and BF defined in terms of DF, we can now calculate the ratio of segment AF to segment BF and set it equal to the ratio of the sines of half of angle B to half of angle A. All right, so let's figure out this ratio of segment AF to segment BF. Really, all we need to do is divide this by that. And here's what we get when we divide segment AF by segment BF. Notice that in the numerator and the denominator, we have BF, which we can cancel out. So the ratio of segment AF to segment BF comes down to this here, which we have here on the left. And remember that from the law of sines, that must be equal to the ratio of sine of half of angle B to sine of half of angle A. And that's what we have right here. This equation plus our other equation, which is angle A plus angle B equals 84 degrees, can now be graphed on Desmos, and we'll look for the intersection of the curves of the two equations. Wow, so who would have thought a graph like this could come out of a pretty straightforward geometry problem? While it looks complicated, this line here represents the fact that angle A plus angle B equals 84 degrees. And these red curves here represent our relation between the sines of angle A and angle B. Remember that all we want is the point of intersection between the blue and red lines, whose x and y coordinates will give us values for angle A and angle B that satisfy both equations. So isn't that cool? We don't have to do any work to simplify this big, messy gobbledygook here. All we have to do is see where they intersect on the graph. We can disregard any intersections that happen when either angle is negative, because we're looking for real angles in a triangle. With that in mind, it looks like the only intersection is this one right here, and that happens to be at 1272.
which means that since angle A was represented on the x-axis, angle A is 12 degrees. And since angle B is represented on the y-axis, angle B is 72 degrees. Let's plug in these values to our triangle just to check our work. I encourage you to pause the video, fill in the rest of the angles yourself, and make sure that there's no contradictions when angle A is 12 degrees and angle B is 72 degrees. All right, so here's the completed triangle. I encourage you to check through all the angles and make sure that they do make sense and that there are no contradictions. We began the problem by filling out some angles. Then we used the angle bisector theorem and the law of sines to build a chain of ratios, which let us relate sides and angles to each other. We were able to graph these relations and find their point of intersection, which gave us the angles of A and B that satisfied both relations. Some important lessons that we can take from this is to use all the information we're given in a problem, don't give up, and look for connections between different areas of math, such as geometry and trigonometry in this case. Pat yourself on the back. We solved a tough problem. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. Have a great day.